Okay. Go. Okay. Zoom room's open. I see 19 of y'all. That is perfect. Thank you guys. All right. So since we're live, you guys should be listening. Your distractions should be put away. Yes. Oh, that's right. We'll get the idea. Yes, it's kind of a cool. You still also have to listen to what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, anyway, what we're going to talk about today is some of the basics of the JavaScript syntax, which means the rules of the language um, and the way that you need to, if you were learning another spoken language, be the same thing. You'd start with the rules of how it works, and then you would start to learn words and sentences and other cool stuff like, you know, you guys get that part. We are going up. We're going to do something similar by um, breaking down the very core basics of JavaScript. Especially starting with the thing called console.log, which is a way to keep up. Since now that we're creating programs, there's going to be things that are going to go wrong or that are going to um, not work the way that you intend them to. Console log feature. Anyway, console log is a way to um, note what's happening and why it's breaking and stuff like that. And it's a very useful tool for JavaScript. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, before we do any of that, though, we need to have a root folder set up for unit seven because we need somewhere to actually put these files before we start doing anything crazy with them. This root folder setup is exactly the same as unit five and unit six, except for one new addition, a scripts subfolder where our JS files are going to live. So if I go into my six period web design OneDrive folder, I have mine grouped by file type. You don't have to do this, but if you want your file explorer to look like this, you can easily figure out what file is which. You can go to view and change group by to type. And that will group everything together in one, uh, or group every type of file together, like zips, like file folders, like uh, all that fun stuff. I'm going to minimize these for now so they're not distracting. All we can see here are our file folders. Go back to the Home tab and create a new folder, exactly the same as Units 5 and Unit 6, and all the other root folders we made before that. So first initial, last name, P6, Unit 7. All right, it's going to line up nicely with unit six. Uh, there should be a unit five for some reason. It's oh, because I spelled my name wrong. That's right. Anyway, we have our unit seven folder. Double click to get in there. The three required subfolders that you need in every root. We went from styles and SRC to now scripts, styles, and SRC. We're going to make each of those right now. I like to start with scripts. So I think it's the most fun to type. All right. Another new folder for styles. And then another new folder for SRC. Exactly the same root folder setup that we've done all this uh, all this semester, except now we have a scripts folder to go along with it, where our JS is going to live. All right? I'm going to go fast since we've done this a lot. You guys know how to do this. Next, we're going to get into VS Code and open up that folder. Don't look at this. this is, don't look behind the curtain. We're going to um, start writing some JavaScript today. It's going to be boring. so. Get ready for kind of a boring JavaScript day because we need to cover how the ideas work before we start getting into the more fun stuff. And it makes the fun stuff less intimidating once we get to that point. Anyways, we're going to file, open folder, and then go to six period web design in our uh, OneDrives and then open up unit seven like this. Exactly the same setup from root folders unit five and unit six. We need an index page for our assignment, which is 7.1. But we also need a home page with links to each of our assignments, like a table of contents. So I'm going to start with that piece. I'm going to click on the, uh, the paper with the plus icon and call this U7, short for unit 7, obviously, home page. Oh, I forgot to put the .html. So if you do that, you got the white lines. You right click on it and go rename .html at the end like this. And we're going to start this just like any old normal HTML file, right? HTML5, change the document title to be uh, unit 7 homepage. And then we're just going to put an A, enter. Because we haven't made our index page yet, we can use the hashtag as a placeholder, something we're going to change later. Shift hashtag, 
Just put it inside the quotes there. And then in between my anchor start and end tags, I'm going to put a 7.1 because that's what we're going to link back to this homepage later on. My little H1 for the Blakeney unit 7 homepage. This is the HTML file that you can decorate however you want. It is only required that you have the anchors to each of the assignments. Again, process we've done before, so I'm going to go through it quickly one time. Now, this is the new part where we're linking three different file types together for our assignment 7.1. We need to connect an HTML file, a CSS uh, style sheet, and a JavaScript file all to one index. So we do that. We need some structure. I'm going to create another new file by clicking on the paper with the plus button. And I'm going to call this one 7.1 index.html. Don't forget your .html. Which one are you under? Are you under, under styles? No, I'm under the root folder, the whole root. It's in line with the home page, like this. We're going to start. I'm going to close my home page tab because I don't need it currently. We're going to start this HTML file just like we normally do. HTML and then hit enter. Oh, just kidding. Kind of not work. HTML5, I mean. Okay. Document title on this one is assignment 7.1, JavaScript, variables, and functions, which you can uh, shorten to be var and func. We got the func here. And um, basics. You don't have to have that long of a title. You just need assignment 7.1, um, and we'll go from there. OK. So we've got our HTML established. Now we need a style sheet, a JavaScript file, and a version number are our three big uh, pieces of organization while we're prepping our materials for, um, for this file. So I'm going to close my explorer so you can see my whole uh, page here. I'm going to hit underneath my title on line 8. I'm going to add the, the letters v1 and then quick comment that so that I know that this is uh, version number 1 of this page with control question mark. That will automatically turn that into a quick HTML comment like this, like we're used to. Control question mark is your quick comment keystroke that is very useful. OK, so now we've got our uh, version number assigned. We have our HTML document made. Now we're getting into subfolders because we've got to make a style sheet and a JS file. So we're going to click on styles first, right click on that with the subfolder selected, and go new file, 7.1style.css. And then we're actually, before we link them together, we're going to go to scripts this time and do that same process, but for a JavaScript file. The extension on a JavaScript file is JS. So with my scripts subfolder selected, a lot of S's in web design today, um, I'm going to right click and create a new file. I'm going to call this one 7.1 main. Dot JS. The main.js is the, or the main part of JavaScript is similar to the word index and the word style in their specific files because it's just kind of the default name that the computer works the best with. And if you followed along with me so far, inside of your script subfolder, you'll have a main.js. Inside of your style subfolder, you'll have a 7.1 style. And you'll have two index HTML pages, one for the whole assignment and one for the home page. All the usual stuff that we've been setting up. I'm going to close my home page. We should have three tabs. Three different files or three different file types open inside of your VS Code currently. Right? Okay. So now let's link our uh, style sheet the way that we know how to do that with a Zelda link. So I go uh, above the title, is where I like to put mine right here on line number seven. You can type L I N K and then hit enter. That's going to give you two out of your three required style sheet connection terms. I don't know what the actual name for these are. Technically, it's attributes. But um, anyways, inside of the high ref, we're going to start with the subfolder of styles. It'll pop up like this. And then there's our 7.1 style sheet. We can just click on it. The last and final piece we need for this Zelda link is a type equals text slash CSS, like this. So we've now connected our style sheet to our uh, the head, the brain of our page. And we're going to do the same thing. Not the same exact thing, but a similar thing to the JavaScript file. So since we're still in the early stages of learning um, JavaScript, we need to, uh, we're going to put it in the body as compared to the head. So we're just going to focus on line number 12 for right now. Mine's line number 12, at least. My first line in between my body tags. 
The element that connects a JavaScript file to an HTML document is really easy to remember because it's just the word script. There is an important distinction, though. Just like link needs a high ref, anchor needs a high ref, and image needs an SRC, script also needs an SRC. So we're going to type script colon SRC and then hit enter. That's going to turn it into a script start and end tag with an SRC attribute. This is exactly like the high ref on a style sheet. So we're going to start with the subfolder that our JavaScript lives inside of, which is scripts. And then there it is, our JS 7.1 main JS. That's all you need to do to connect your JavaScript file to your HTML document. Exactly the same process as a Zelda link, just with a different tag and a different file type. Kai, you had a question? Does it doesn't matter if it's in there or like next to our or below our CFS. It does, yes, depending on what your JavaScript is doing. For today, it goes in the body because it changes parts about the body. I'll show you here in just a second. So these are the steps that are required to now link all three of our, our key web design languages of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. This type of web design is called front end. So we have all three of our, we have our big three in front end, all established, all connected together, all ready to go inside of our, um, inside of our document. So what we'll talk about next, I'll check your uh, stuff later on. Today's kind of a note-taking day. It's a code along in the sense that you are um, seeing how these things work, but not exactly working on the assignment. You have time tomorrow to do that and my help tomorrow to do that as well. Today's kind of a note-taking day, guided notes. Okay, anyways, to continue our guided notes, I'm gonna make my way to my main JS tab on top of my VS code, which is gonna look exactly like an empty HTML or CSS file because we haven't started writing any JavaScript yet. JavaScript is a language because it's programming, it's making a lot more things happen than a web page load or a div change color. You need to leave lots of comments and lots of little log instances, which I'll talk about here in a second, to make your program easy to understand for new users as well as for you to understand in the future. Now, the way that you do that, there are two different ways to leave a comment in JavaScript. You guys wanna type these out. There's a single line comment and there is a multi-line comment. What you're gonna notice though, is that if I type out the word line on uh, the Zoom room, it's gonna, oh, of course now it doesn't wanna do it. It kept turning into an auto listener in the, uh, in the future or in the previous classes. So multiple line, yeah, it doesn't work anymore. That's fine. Multi-line comments are gonna take up more than one line, single line, obviously. The way that you make a single line comment is with two slashes, just like this. So any of your single line comments, when you're outlining something like a variable or a specific step in a program, program is another term for a list of executables. It's that .exe, whenever you install something, on a Windows computer at least, Executables are just a list, it's an actual recipe, but then it actually does the recipe as compared to telling the computer to understand it. It's kind of a weird distinction, but anyways, doesn't matter. Your single line comments are always gonna have two slashes. Your multi-line comments are going to be exactly the same, the same as CSS comments. So that means multiple line comments are gonna start with a slash and an asterisk, then a space, and then another space, asterisk, slash. They're going to look exactly like CSS comments. So slash, asterisk, and then go to the end here, asterisk, slash. Oh, if I did it right, asterisk, slash. This is how I want you guys to remember. If you've been taking notes, you'll have this access. It's fine, because these are commented out. They're obviously not doing anything for our JavaScript. They're just nice little references for the difference between single line comments and multi-line comments. Another key kind of note-taking feature of JavaScript is the console log command. So just like I showed you guys document.write, that's gonna reference the HTML document and make text appear on the screen. We're gonna do something very similar here as a note-taking and debugging tool called console.log. So the way you type that out, it's pretty literal. The word console, a period, the word log, and then parentheses with quotes inside of them. Now, whatever you put inside these parentheses quotes is what is going to be logged inside of the console. And I'll show you how to access that here in a second. So what we're gonna put inside those quotes is this is a console log event, just like this. 
And I'm going to break down the pieces of our JavaScript command here. We're getting into function territory now. I will talk about variables here in a second. But we're getting into function territory because we're writing something for our instructions for our computer to actually execute, actually go through. All right. So if we look at our index page, I'll go back to this in just a second. If we look at our index page, the only thing that's currently inside the body, inside the displayable space, is this script file. Do you notice how there's no content in between the start and end tags? Script is a weird element because it is an element, but it does not have to have content between the start and end, just like the normal uh, HTML elements that we're used to. You can leave this blank. In fact, you're encouraged to leave it blank. But if I were to run this, click the play button and run and debug on Chrome. Oh, Edge it is, I guess. Um, there's nothing here. I can see my path because I'm running it locally. I can see the name of my tab, which is great. But my script that I just wrote is not present. That's because we're logging something in the console. As you can see, the debug console has blue text, exactly how we wrote it in the console. That's going to be reflected on your web page as well. To get to your console, you right click in the anywhere in the space, and you go down here to inspect. And then when you open up, um, actually, OK, on Edge, it's right next to Elements. Click on this little console button. You're going to see that console log event is present right here inside of our pages console. That means our JavaScript is working because it's connected properly to our page. It made a log on the console saying what we needed it to say. And it's present inside of our inspect uh, debug situation right here. Now, the reason you would use this is if you have multiple variables working together or a specific set of rules that need to be executed, you would make a console log when something goes wrong. Right? So you can look back at the console and say, OK, what didn't work where? And you'll have a chance to see that. It's kind of like um, bookmarks or flags. When something changes, it's going to flag, and you'll be able to fix it later on. So you can also, it's a, bit, a little bit easier to see not on the Edge version. Here, let me go back. Um, we'll close this. Because the other versions have uh, the actual line that it comes off of. So I'm going to run it through. Oh, it's going to do Edge every day. OK, fine. We'll go live. So here I am in Firefox, a different browser, right? If I right click and inspect this, the console is a lot easier to see. And then there it is right there. This is a console log event. And it tells me it's from the 7.1 main JS file on line 11. So if I go over here, go back to my JS, line 11 has the console log feature that we've just created. The way that this works in brief terms, it starts with what we focus on, in this case, the console. Next is what we want to happen. In this case, is the log function. And then after the log function, we put what we actually want put or what we want actually displayed inside of the log. It's a lot of boring stuff, but this is important to the debug process once our JavaScript gets much messier, right? So that's the console log function because it has a destination, an action, and some type of results that are going to combine together to create a, uh, an output like a console log event in here. That's an easy way to check and make sure that your JavaScript is working. So we'll close that. Let's see. Let me pull this up real quick. All right. Now we need to talk about the next note I want you guys to take is JavaScript is very case sensitive. So it's dependent on what type of uh, upper or lowercase you're using, which can create very different effects in your programs. Some of them good, some of them bad. Um, we all know uppercase, obviously. We all know lowercase, obviously. JavaScript uses something called camel case. Just like the animal, camel case in JavaScript starts with a lowercase letter. And instead of spaces, you remember you've heard me talk all semester about how web design doesn't really like spaces. JavaScript, <coughs> to create these separations, you use camel case. So every time, because it's like a hump on a camel. So for every word after the first one is capitalized. So if I write my name, we'll just go Ben. The next word would be Blakeney. And I am a teacher at Skyline High School. This is camel case. So we start with a lowercase letter, and then every other word becomes capitalized. No spaces. This is important for certain functions and for certain variable assignments. So we're going to use camel case. I'm going to put some asterisks by it. This is the case that we use when we're writing in JavaScript. I'm going to comment that out with control question mark so that that does not affect my uh, my current JS file. Just something to keep in mind, something that you'll practice. 
I'm gonna make a note real quick. You guys are learning another language right now. On top of the two you've already learned, this is pretty impressive stuff to learn three languages in a single semester of class. So you guys need to be proud of yourselves and give yourself some slack when things don't work the way that you intend, all right? This is rewiring your brain right now. Be patient, even if it doesn't feel like it. Okay, that's my note. We're gonna talk about one of the most important things in JavaScript, which is variables, the way that things change around and the way that things um, are affected. Just like in algebra, variables are a way of storing data, which is what uh, we're gonna do in our JavaScript functions. So if you go to the thread for the week, in the replies, there is a JS variables W3 schools that we're gonna walk through a little bit here. Variables are a little bit confusing, right? I'm not exactly a math wizard. So I understand those of you who are also not exactly math wizards, it's a little hard to wrap your head around. If you're good at math, then this might make more sense than it does to me. So anyways, besides the point, just like in algebra, just like in uh, arithmetic and regular math, we can set a variable to whatever we want it to be. By default, they're undeclared. They have no value until we give them one. And there are three terms, three kind of ideas that we use to create variables. That is the word variable. The word let, which is consistent on um, later functions when they get more advanced, and constant, which is kind of a misnomer because it doesn't really do something constantly. It's kind of weird. So they are automatically, variables are automatically declared when they are first used. So the second you set x equal to five in your JavaScript file, x becomes five and stays five. Stays that way until otherwise changed by either a program or by the developer, which is you. So if x is 5 and y is 6, that makes z x plus y. z is going to store the value of 11. Every time you use x, it's 5. Every time you use y, it's 6. Every time you use z, it's 11. All right? Variable is the one we're going to start by focusing on. We'll get into let and const later because it's really hard to tell the differences without getting uh, real-world examples. But this W3Schools JavaScript variables is super helpful to me whenever I get stuck and figure out why um, my scripts aren't working. So we're going to set some variables. This is where I want you to code along a little bit more again. Variables can be anything that you want to be named and to be set to. We're going to stick to the simple ones and copy that exactly. So variable x equals 5, not 56. Variable y equals 6 and variable z equals x plus y. So you'll notice JavaScript has a lot of spaces. I know what I said earlier about camel case on names. When you're writing things like functions, it's the opposite. You want to include more spaces so that it's easy to read and easy to figure out what each of the pieces mean. Also, marks is a different term from variable x. Vary is a different term from variable y, right? Vars is different from variable z. These spaces are important in JavaScript, much more important than they are in HTML and CSS. So we've got our variables established here, whatever our developer wants them to be. For our cases, while we're understanding these, they are very simple. We're just going to do uh, some basic arithmetic with our function here. Let me move my thing over here. We have officially declared our variables, which is the first half in programming, because now we need to tell JavaScript what to do with those variables. That actually makes it um, makes it into JavaScript, right? So let me go back over to my notes here. What we're going to do now, I'm just pulling this straight off the W3Schools, is we're going to write a function that changes an HTML element to be one of these variables. It's going to shift the HTML element making the computer think a little bit more than it's used to and create something visually up here or make something up here on the screen. Before we do that, we need to go back to the HTML file and above the script, we need to create a P hashtag demo, right? So P hashtag demo and then hit enter. Leave the content section blank. Your lines 12 and 13 should look like mine with a PID of demo on top of a script SRC 7.1 main.js, right? Yours should look like this. Yeah, Juliana. Uh, yes, you do actually, good catch. I did forget, you have to separate your variables by semicolon, thank you. Just like in CSS, properties and values. So make sure your variables have semicolons after you've done this PID of demo. So what we're gonna do now is write a program that changes the uh, paragraph with the idea of demo 
to be something that uses these variables. So follow along with me here. Just like we did console.log, destination to focus on and action required, we're gonna type document because we wanna focus on the HTML document followed by a period. Next is okay. JavaScript is going, all right, I'm looking at the HTML document. Okay, what do I do now? What we want JavaScript to do, copy this exactly, camel case, get elements by ID. Capital I, lowercase d, capital B, lowercase y, capital E element, lowercase g. Got to start using that camel case for your functions, okay? Now we have a destination, a focus. We have an action that we want to be doing to it. Or, um, now we need something to focus on in detail, okay? What ID do you want me to get the element by? We want that to be demo. That's going to go, that is what's going to go inside of your parentheses and your quotes here. Document, focus, get element by ID action on the demo. The last little piece that you need is something that makes sure that your document focuses just on the H or the uh, command that we're writing right here, the function, focuses just on the HTML file that you are trying to tell it to. So dot enter HTML, all caps, lowercase enter, all caps HTML is going to let this document program only focus on the HTML that it is attached to. Just like this. Here's where spaces come into play as they're important. HTML equals is going to be different than HTML space equals. I don't know why. JavaScript was written in 10 days by one dude. So there's going to be a little bit of quirks here and there. OK, so we have our destination. We have our function. We have our focus. And we have our constraints removed within our staying within the inner HTML. What you do next is you hit Enter, add a pair of quotes, and write this exact phrase, the value of as let's do z sorry is semicolon okay this is just going to change the text this is not applied any of our variables yet how we apply those variables is we do a plus sign and then the variable that we want to appear after this quote followed by a semicolon so let's break down how we read this we've declared our variables as good programmers before we've used them Focus on the document. Look for the uh, look for an element with the ID of demo within the HTML. Change that element to be this brown text. The value of z is after the brown text. Add the variable of z as defined by the JavaScript. Right. All of this work. If we go back to the uh, I'm not live right now. Let me go live again. All of this work to just make our page say the value of z is 11. Welcome to programming, where it's lots and lots of work for very small results. So be patient with yourself. What we can do now is go back into that JS file, change the uh, plus variable. We want it to be the value of x this time. Change the z to an x, since we've already decided that x equals 5. Then if I go back to my output, it's going to change the value of x to 5. This program is running on our computer. You guys have successfully written your first program. Congratulations. You are now a full stack developer. No, it's not true. But you're basically there. OK. The next thing we can do, now we're getting into function territory, because a function is a combination of variables and instructions that make a result happen on the page for our purposes while we're learning how JS works. One of the most common functions that you can write while you're learning how a system or a language works is the hello world function. That's what we're going to do right now. To start that off, we need a target on the HTML. We need some actual structure to apply this function to. We're going to go to line 14 underneath our script SRC. And we're going to do another P hashtag. But instead of I or demo, we're going to call this one hello. So P hashtag hello, hit enter, leave the content section blank. Notice how there's no content between these tags, but the JavaScript was able to fill in the content as well as execute a command all uh, on one specific destination because that's how we assigned it. What we do next is the same process that we wrote for the demo. Focus on the documents. Type this out with me. Document dot lowercase g, capitalize everything else, no spaces. Get element by ID. 
parentheses, quotes. And then our ID that we're working with here is hello, all lowercase. All right. So we've set up our parameter. The last thing we need is that inner HTML so that it focuses on the um, focuses on the document that it's attached to. Now, whatever we put in quotes under here is what is going to change the paragraph or any element with the ID of hello. It's going to change it to whatever we set here, which is, in our case, hello world, just like this. Okay. Your function should look similar to my lines 23 and 24. So if we go back to our output and refresh, nothing's happened. Why is that? If we go back to the HTML. Remember, HTML recipes read from the top to the bottom. So because the script that we're trying to execute, this uh, hello world command function that we've written here, is below the target is below the execution uh, program, it's not able to see this line right here. So I'm going to control X, my paragraph of ID, hello, hit enter, control B, put it on top of the script. So now when my page loads from top to bottom, it has all of the variables that it needs to execute a function, just like it does here. Declared our variables, we've declared our function, declared our variables, declared our function. So if we go back to our output here, now hello world has appeared on our screen. So even if these paragraph IDs said something crazy, like this is not a demo, or this will not say hello, right? This is a usual HTML element like we're used to, PID of demo. Right, it's got some content, it's got a start and end tag. It should, by all means, say what we tell it to say in the structure. Even if I close my server and I go live, that's not true because the JavaScript is overriding whatever content we have in the HTML since that's what the function declares. That makes sense, generally speaking. Okay, this is your introduction to JavaScript variables and functions, some of the key features of how you make anything happen using JavaScript. Now, the reason today is kind of a note-taking day is you saw how much work that it took me, someone who knows what they're doing, not to say you guys don't, but this is new, right? That's how long it took me to make two things happen on an HTML page that I could have just written with a paragraph, right? This will take time. I cannot emphasize how much time it will take and how much we need to know the basics before we get um, too crazy. The last thing I'll do before I talk about what 7.1 is requiring, which you have time today and tomorrow to work on. If you've been following along, you're basically uh, pretty much done for the most part. You can just change things up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is change my hashtag on my anchor on line 11 here to be the actual 7.1 HTML file. So 7.1 index.html so that I can access that from my um, my document later on. Check and make sure that's running by going uh, to the play button, run and debug. I'm going to do Chrome this time. There we are. <laughs> Excuse me. Unit 7 homepage. If I click on 7.1, it's going to run my JS because it's all connected like we did uh, like we did it right the first time. Is this making sense? Cool. Yeah. Yes, Kyle. What's up? My hello world will show I'll check it in just a second. Make sure that your script is below your hello world targets. It won't work otherwise. All right. Congratulations. You have all officially written a program. A developer and a programmer. Put it on the resume. Okay. So hold up. I'm going to wrap up the Zoom room real quick. I'll help you guys uh, finish getting set up. Well, don't worry about 7.1 until tomorrow. It is available on Canvas if you want to check it out. Um, oh, like this? Do you say show us or close? Yeah, the homepage is just like this. Okay. I'm going to close up the Zoom room. Thank you guys for listening. I'll help you get set up. We only have, what, 10 more minutes in here. Um, as long as your unit seven roots are made, you got a couple HTML files and stuff linked together, you're in a good spot, and I can help you out tomorrow. All right. Thank you guys for listening.